So we're finally getting rain again after having a huge lengthy drought, which is good because there was a lot of fires. So the girls have had their round bale placed in the shelter now. So they go in there much more. They were already starting to go in there. Otherwise I wouldn't have said worry about them not eating due to feeling more trapped. So see, there they are. And I'm not going to approach them right there because I don't want them to climb over the wall to try to get away from me because they'll definitely feel trapped there. I've got my tripod today, so hopefully I'll be able to get some better angles because it's probably a little boring watching me interact with them always from my view. And it limits what I can do for interaction because my hands are full, or at least one hand is full of the phone. So we're going to do it like this. Now I did get them a new hay net because I wanted to get them bigger holes than the one inch holes because I thought they'd be too small. So they have one and a half inch. Um, I tried feeding them out of a smaller net uh, with the one inch holes and they didn't dig it. I think it was a little too frustrating to get it. So I, they needed bigger holes. And then the nice thing is like as they get used to it, then we can kind of start to use the one inch holes because once they know how to eat out of a hay net easily, it won't be a problem. So. But right now their weight's okay, so I'm not worried because they don't look like Milo, <laughs> who is fat. So right now, fresh grass is kind of the highest value thing I can give to these girls because all of the grass in their field has died because of the drought. So this grass is nicer than the hay, and it's still quite high value to them, more so than if I just hand fed them hay. So that's why I'm using the grass. And what I'm really working on here is just getting them to approach me, but also building the duration that they stay with me and getting them to kind of be more comfortable with me in their presence. Because initially, even if they'd come over, they were very afraid of when I'd move suddenly or if I moved in a different way or if there was a sound. So seeing them start to get more comfortable, even when other sounds and new things or new movements are going on, indicates how much more safe they're feeling around me. And again, the reason why I don't really push for too much all at once, like trying to reach and scratch their neck, is because I feel like there's a high chance that they just balk and back up at this point because they're not used to me reaching past them yet. So I don't want to ruin the steps that I've taken to having them trust me by pushing too hard or going too fast, especially if it's not going to result in anything productive. And since I don't want them to feel trapped and they ultimately have the choice to leave, I'm really trying to build the trust that they feel around me. And even if I could trap them or restrain them in some way and handle them, if I put them back out in this setting, I would likely struggle to catch them even still. So even if I could get a halter on them sooner or do those types of things, I would still be at a loss in terms of catching them if they're ultimately afraid of me, which is why I'm doing all these little small building blocks to get them over their nervousness of me because that'll make all those other steps like halter breaking and eventually being an under saddle horse so much easier because the initial stress that many horses feel in training or when they're being gentled isn't present because I'm dealing with that aspect of it first because yeah I want to be able to catch them easily I don't want them to be afraid of me and I want them to start off on a really positive note with people and I'm already seeing how it's working so I intend to continue this way because I think that it's working nicely for them. What you see in these clips is that they will walk away from me but the time that they spent away from me has decreased dramatically and they're choosing to be in my presence for lengthier periods of time which is really positive because ultimately what we're working towards is having them be horses for people to enjoy and if they don't enjoy being around people it's not going to be particularly enjoyable being around them so the more time they spend with me and the more they choose to interact with me this is exactly what I'm looking for because I want to create friendly, interactive horses that enjoy being around people and have a positive association with them because this will make everything I teach them in the future a lot easier because I'm associating positive emotions with me that will continue throughout training and it'll make it a lot easier to ask them of things that might in other horses induce greater amounts of stress because that initial trust isn't there. And that's really what I'm trying to do with these girls interaction and introduction to people so i can afford to let them walk away because first of all they're doing it to kind of recoup and feel safer and reassess the situation 
Since they've been wild, they've had to deal with other stressors that a lot of horses in domestication don't have to deal with. So if they need to do that to feel safer, that's great. It brings down their anxiety level, makes them less likely to react because they have the choice to walk away and then come back. I'm not pursuing them. It helps them feel safer. And what's happening is they're choosing to be around me by choice much more frequently. And part of the decision to do that is dependent on them being able to walk away because if they weren't able to do so, it would be more anxiety inducing to be in my presence, which would make it less reinforcing to be around me because it would cause them more anxiety. So they'd be more likely to avoid my presence if the stress cost was more than the rewards my present was giving them. So that's kind of my goal. And what you can see here is that these are horses that are wild horses who are recently being handled and they are still choosing to interact with me by choice more often than a lot of domesticated horses choose to, which I think is a win in itself because I want horses to enjoy being around me and enjoy training in general and make it as nice as possible for them because it just works best for both me and the horse and any people who deal with them in the future. And from here too, now that they're more comfortable with me, I'm going to start bringing like a halter out with me and get them used to me holding a halter in my hand and just having it around them. And then eventually start teaching them how to target the halter and do all that stuff. And that will help me get nice and close to them and start to kind of condition the behavior of putting their head in the halter. I really want to get them trying more foods, but they're not there yet. They really only want to eat things that look like forage. But hopefully they'll start experimenting with treats at some point because that'll be a lot more reinforcing, I think, and it'll be more exciting for them. So it's easier for me to continually reinforce if I can get them on like hay pellets or something versus having to go and pick grass. So that'll be nice. Also, once I can scratch them, June's getting comfortable with me touching her face and whatnot now. So I don't think it'll be long before I can start scratching in them. And once I can do that, things move quite quickly because... It's just so easy to find their scratchy spots, especially when they don't get itched frequently. Juniper is really neat because she chooses to spend so much time around me and is just so interactive with people and so curious. And I think this type of personality is going to lend itself really, really well to having her be a riding horse. I think she's going to be really brave and she'll probably be a really cool horse to use as a trail horse or any number of things because of how curious and inquisitive she is and how brave she is. I really like seeing how her personality is developing. Mesa is a bit more reserved and less curious. She's very aware of any potential threats in the area but chooses to err on the side of caution in most cases and isn't quite as food motivated for the grass. She likes the grass but she loses interest quicker and kind of chooses to go do her own thing more even if she's approaching more readily. So I think between the two of them Juniper is more of an extrovert and Mesa is more introverted. I also get the impression that Mesa might have had more issues like adapting to captivity because of her nature. She is a very smart horse and I think she'll be a horse where I really have to earn their trust to have her be comfortable around me and if I screw up with how I handle her she's going to hold a grudge or be scared for longer than what Juniper might be if I took a step just a little bit too quickly and scared her a little. I think it would take me longer to earn Mesa's trust back than Juniper which is also why I'm moving at the rate that I am because if I get Juniper tame it's going to make taming Mesa a lot easier um, and Mesa's already getting a lot better like they've relaxed so much in so many different ways that I I'm really happy with the progress that we've had and I'm really excited to see how they develop as horses because I think that they're going to be really really neat to do a lot of things with because uh, their personalities are just so cool. Another neat thing about working with these girls that I think also is important to acknowledge in their process with training is that they notice so many different things that other horses might be less likely to notice and tune out because they haven't had to assess threats to the same degree as a wild horse. Like if I'm wearing a different hat, 
or different clothes or if I smell a little bit different. All of these things can change how they perceive me on any given day or even things that are ongoing in the environment. They notice every little thing and they're constantly looking for potential threats even if those threats have nothing to do with me and they do it to a degree that a domesticated horse wouldn't have to because they haven't had to like self-sustain and assess threats and keep themselves safe because they're so managed by people and this makes these horses really smart and it'll probably make them learn things exceptionally quickly once they trust me but it also means that they're easier to get sent over threshold and have a flight reaction even if that reaction is quite mild like what juniper showed in that last clip where she just had a little flinch but ultimately what matters is how quickly she chooses to come back and interact with me because the more i close the gap that she needs to take away from me to self-soothe that the more she's trusting me and the better our relationship is getting so that's really what i'm looking to see is like her guard dropping around me but also when stuff does scare her how quickly she lets me back into her bubble and comes back I also honestly find it really relaxing to work with them in this manner because I feel like both of us are relaxed or like all of us when Mesa is around. I feel like we just all are kind of zen and even when they're a little cautious it's never to the degree where they're like panic stricken or anything and it's just a really nice way to kind of just exist and almost meditate watching them and seeing how their behavior changes in such subtle ways on a day-to-day -day basis and how they're starting to let me into their bubble. And I also find it really beautiful how they want to interact with me on such a frequent basis, despite the fact that realistically, like, I don't have that much to offer to them and they could ignore me. So their curiosity and bravery and that is something that I really respect and appreciate. And I really want to be earning that in a nice, fair way to them. So Juniper is definitely more interactive than Mesa. She started out more nervous, but she's definitely more interested in people and just more curious and more food motivated. Mesa will kind of come for a bit and then leave and go do her own thing. But if I can get one of them really comfortable with me, it'll make getting the other a lot easier. So Juniper has gotten comfortable enough with me that she'll spend like upwards of 20 minutes with me and then leave and keep coming back which is really, really good because they used to not want to come back always when they'd leave and they would also approach much more nervous and would flee if I moved too much and so on. So it's a huge improvement. The duration is way different. Um, and now I'm just building her towards getting more comfortable with me touching her face so I can start to kind of reach past her head and then eventually scratch her on the withers.